stop going where you're expecting them to go. <laughs> um, in our announcements today, Happy Father's Day. Um, if you don't have a dad who's here today, remember them positively, please. Uh, and after service, we invite you to come over and have a soft drink, a bottle of water, um, some strawberry lemonade or some coffee, and we have a load of cookies over there. Uh, so we're in the parish hall because I think it's going to be too hot on the patio today after church. So um, just step across and through the red door over there, uh, you'll find an entrance for those of you who are visitors and guests. Uh, Jonah Taylor Daniels has his 19th birthday coming up this week. He was actually born on a Father's Day, if I remember correctly. Yep. No, I think it was the day of, because I was hospitalized at the same hospital uh, the day he was born. So uh, I kind of remember that one. And Cassandra Caramella has a birthday coming up on the 21st as well. Um, please remember the Karchners in Hawaii in your prayers. Um, and then there are the regular special collections, discretionary fund. Um, we've, we've had some very positive responses to there being dog food in the handouts, uh, the blessing bags from people who find it just as difficult to find food for their dogs as they do food for themselves um, and really appreciate that assistance. Uh, so remember, we can take financial donations that will purchase items for blessing bags, or if you have them to give, we will certainly take them and use them. Um, and a, a big bag of dog food wouldn't be bad either. So keep that in mind. And then um, all sizes of white athletic socks, new ones for a program across the border. And there is, as I said last week after the Senate of December, we know there is another mission in uh, Nogales, Sonora, which helps people who are coming in, trying to come into the country legally. And they house up to 150 to 200 people in their mission, feed them three meals a day, give them showers, and the big claim is with hot water. Um, and that is supported by the ELCA, the Presbyterian, Presbyterian Church USA, the Methodists, and the United Church of Christ. Um, all of us together who are full communion partners work to support that mission site. So if that's something you would like to give to um, through the ELCA, you can designate giving for that and we'll get the name. It's, it's Misericordia, but I don't know what the first part of it is. Uh, so we'll have to get hold of the Senate to get that name. And I may have it in my um, agenda from the Senate too. So uh, keep that in mind. Also, non-perishable items for the food cart. Those are very important. And today our council meets after the reception. And Debbie's hoping that we meet in the office where the air conditioning <laughs> is on. Uh, I'm probably the... not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess in my office after church, and there's plenty of seating if we set up a few extra seats in there. So. Um, We'll be sure the air is working uh, for that meeting. And I think that is probably it. Our thanks to uh, Robert Loring for assisting at the altar today. Um, and he will also be assisting with communion. So if you have a special need, like it's difficult for you to get up to come up to get communion, let us know because the communion people can bring communion to you in the pew, if that's something that would be helpful. So uh, just keep that in mind. And I think we're all set to go, Robert. Good morning. Good morning. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we are and captives to sin and cannot forgive ourselves. We, we have sinned against you in God, word, and deed, by, by what we have done, done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. 
we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, and we bless, and lead us, so that we may be like the Lord, and walk on your grace, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith.
No, no not of him. The, the red acclamation. Oh, that's right. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. That's new, folks. It so. is new. We just did it last week. Yeah. So the acclamation is printed up in front of you. Let's join together in that. The kingdom of God is come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Hallelujah. Thank you. Uh-huh. you got to keep me on task. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned the twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits, to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You receive without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts. No bag for your journey, or two tunics, or sandals, or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. In whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, Shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it would be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on, that, on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me, as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of the Father speaking through you. Brother will betray, betray brother to death, and the, and the father his children, his child and children will rise against parent. Try that again, folks. Brother will betray, betray brother to death, and to father his child. And children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The Holy Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you. 
Because in the other Gospels, we discover that Christ is very open to speaking with the Samaritans, very open to helping them out in times of crisis, in times of illness. But Matthew's agenda was to write for the Jews. And so he wanted to be sure that they understood that Christ had been sent for the elect. And that's why we have this speaking about not sending the disciples out um, to include the Samaritan communities. Now, I don't know, we're all disciples of Christ, we're members of the body of Christ, the church. It doesn't sound like a fun job. When we read the Gospels, when we hear Paul uh, speaking about justification by faith, but what people will face, and we know what the disciples and Paul face, in their proclaiming the gospel. There were times when Paul was stoned as he fled from a community. And I can tell you that one of the things that happens as you proclaim your faith in Jesus Christ and the joy and hope that lives in you, not everybody is ready to hear it. Any more than all the Jews were ready to hear Jesus talk about it. They went and, and the disciples healed, as we know. They were even given the ability to raise people from the dead when they were sent out. And I want you to know who was included. Even though Christ knew that Judas was going to be a problem, Judas was sent out with the very same gifts as the other disciples. He wasn't separated off to say, oh, you stay home and administrate. Um, while the rest go out and do this work I'm asking them to do. No. Judas received the very same gifts as the other disciples. Maybe, maybe for Christ there was hope in, in giving Judas that gift of going out and healing people and raising the dead would transform his life. But Judas had some other agendas, as we all know. He became disappointed in the fact that Jesus would not strike out, uh, which he knew he had the power to do, but he was unwilling to do. Then instead he journeyed towards sacrifice and death rather than towards the victory that the people of Israel had hoped for in a Messiah. And Judas was one of those folks. So when you and I go out into the world, you know, the world outside of these doors, outside of that wall, and in the places where we live, our neighborhoods, with our friends, sometimes with our families, um, our co-workers, and people we just casually meet, maybe waiting in the 
line at the grocery store, um, that we might have an opportunity to speak about our faith. We might also have an opportunity to witness about what generosity is all about in some of those circumstances, about what it means to be able to help somebody. Now, I've watched people get up partway through a grocery line and not have enough money to finish buying their groceries, and I finished buying them for them. That speaks, that speaks much more loudly in many cases than my standing there and saying, Jesus loves you, it's too bad you can't get all your groceries, but Jesus loves you. Hmm, is that really what Jesus would do? No, Jesus would not do that. He would be reaching out and helping out in any way he could possibly help. We know that a lot of outsiders went to Jesus to ask for help, especially when it had to do with their children. There were several children who died who had to be raised from the dead by Christ. Um, he had a, a real tender spot in his life. And these people were not people who necessarily, necessarily believed in him. But they, as a, as a last part of the desperation of losing a child, they went to Christ to ask for his help. And he never refused. He always stopped what he was doing and took off to help where he could, to do what he could, which was to raise their children. You and I need to be aware that the things we have to say about our faith are very important. They're critical and important in the lives of other people. Because a lot of people are unwilling to hear about joy, about the gift of faith, about feeling confident and strengthened and comforted for our life's journeys because their life isn't anything like that. It could be. They could find, even in the face of, of facing some really tough stuff, they could find that joy in Christ and that comfort and that sense of peace. We see it again and again and again in people in the church. But oftentimes when other people get to that point, they're too angry about it all. And it's hard to break through with the power of Christ's love. And we understand that because what did Jesus tell the disciples to do if they went into a house or a town where they weren't well received with their message? He said, flee, leave, shake the dust off your feet and go. Now, we can be faced with that too, but it doesn't mean we get to dismiss those people. We are called to keep those people in our prayers for the presence of the Spirit to work in their lives in the same way it has worked in ours. So we can't just stop thinking about someone who says, oh, that's a bunch of hogwash, that stuff, that going to church and giving money and praying and hoping against hope that things are going to always be okay. We hear it all the time. And then some of the biggest damage to the whole Christian church comes when the Southern Baptist Convention kicks out 40,000 members because they wanted women to be in leadership positions for the women of their congregations. 40,000 members, folks. Well, that's half the size of the synod that we're a part of in Arizona. That's dismissing that number of people. Hard to believe, isn't it? Difficult for us to understand why people cannot be open to the possibility of women in ministry. Why, the Roman Catholic Church, our brothers and sisters in Christ, have had women in positions of authority and teaching practically from their inception. Now, they haven't become priests yet. You notice I said yet. Yeah, it may be coming. Um, there, may, there may be enough movement in the Catholic Church to get that to happen. But now the Lutheran Church has been for, let me count, 81 was 10 years, 91 is 20, 101 is 30, 11 is 40. Oh, we are already, we're already, or 30, 40, we're already at 50 years of the ordination of women in the ELCA and the previous church bodies. I try not to say the PCBs because it's a terrible pollutant up in the country where chemical factories exist. 
I can't, even, I can't even tell you what it is, but boy, there's a negative connotation about it. So we don't talk about CBC, BCBs in the Lutheran Church. We talk about previous church bodies, the LCA, the ALC, the Slovakian Lutherans, the Moravians, all, you know, all of those folks are part of, of the community and others which we mentioned in the mission, uh, for the mission down in Nogalo, Sonora are part of the community of faith in which we share. And it's a pretty big community of faith nationwide. It really is. Um, and I can't imagine that Lutherans would ever choose to walk away, our Lutherans would ever choose to walk away from 40,000 of their members because they thought maybe somebody should have a greater role in the life of the church. Uh, we went through that journey of discernment when I was on the National Church Council about um, gay people who are in committed relationships being able to serve in pastoral roles in the church. And the ELC approved that. that. That was a hard pill to swallow for a number of people. It was not an easy thing to have happen. And yet we knew that Christ's gift of faith wasn't just meant for the Jews. Jesus went to the Samaritans too. He went, Peter went to the Romans, the centurion and his family, um, and, and Paul traveled all over the northern Mediterranean preaching to people who were non-Jews. Uh, we know that the church is for everybody and that the power of, of Christ's gift of faith moves all kinds of lives to serve the gospel. And yes, the church has some things it said we, we must see because the standard for heterosexuals is the same standard as it is for uh, GLBTQ people. Committed relationships or no relationship in which you are involved intimately. And if you need to talk about that, I can tell you in Florida, uh, my, last, my last National Assembly meeting in Orlando, Florida, the gay community came and stood in front of the dais where the bishop was during the entire assembly as a witness to what they were hoping for. And it was shortly after that, two years later, that the ELCA voted at assembly to in include those communities in our ordained ministry. So, sometimes the things we have to say are wonderful. Well, not just sometimes. Anything about Christ, if we're not being judgmental, is meant to bring healing and hope and comfort and peace in the lives of people. But sometimes people are not ready to hear it. And that means we either have more work to do with them, or if the situation and circumstance seems hopeless, to, to just know that you probably have finished there, but to keep those individuals in your prayers for their lives and, and for the work of the Spirit to move them to faith. So, you know, we're here, we're small, I understand that. We've all had tragedies in our lives. We've lost loved ones. We've born through illness with members of the congregation and in the lives of our families. We've been through unemployment. We all suffered through the pandemic together. All of, all of those things have been a part of who we are. We had, we had wonderful, things to say through Jesus Christ and the power of Christ's Spirit in our lives during every one of those times and people surrounded us with that gift of hope that comes from the Spirit. And we made it. We made it in the time of those deaths. We came to understand in our lives that death is a tragedy. We never will get past all the grief, but we will be able to function. We will be able to let it be a part of who we are knowing with comfort and peace that Christ's hand was in all of it from the very beginning, just as it has been with each one of us. And when it comes to a terrible illness, you know, we've prayed a lot of people through difficult times with illnesses, and, and we've seen the results of those things. But sometimes God's answer is different. I mean, let's look at Felicia Kitsky Hackett. We prayed fervently for her to beat her lung cancer, and it just wasn't to be. And so we supported her in other ways in the life she had left, knowing that she was indeed faithful 
Uh, the last things I ever heard her say were about her relationship with God through Jesus Christ. So let's remember Christ is always with us. The Spirit is around us, guiding us, and encouraging us to be willing to make a difference in the lives of people who have yet to come to know Christ in their lives. Now, we never know what's coming. This morning coming in, Sharon and Jeff and, and Rachel and the boys came by a really bad car accident at the top of Ajo Way before you get to Mount Zion Lutheran Church. Somebody had been driving at a high rate of speed and their car flipped three times. You ne we never know. This morning coming into town, I, I stopped for a red light. I was there 15 seconds. A car blew past me on a full red and somebody was waiting to pull out into the intersection. We never know what life is going to hand us, how difficult it's going to be to face the realities of who we are, where we are, or when we are in the wrong place at the wrong time. But Christ is always there. And that's something we need to let people know. Jesus Christ never deserts us, even when things get tough. In fact, Christ is there in even stronger and greater ways when that's the case for us, bringing us strength and courage in the face of all that this life can hand us. You know, I, I told you when I had to have my surgery for my prostate, it waited three times, got, kept getting delayed. Well, I think it was God's action because it took me that long to get emotionally ready to have that done. But, in order to do it, it was too bad God had to really bung up the knee on my surgeon so that he couldn't stand to do the surgery until finally, almost a year later, when he was able to be on his feet to do that surgery. And he said to me, why don't you just ask one of my associates to do it? And I said, your associates are not nationally awarded for this surgery that you do, that you do so well. And I was willing to wait with all of the difficulties that accompanied it so that I could have you do the surgery. So, you know, we never know, do we? How God's going to intervene, how things are going to work, but what we do know is, lo, I will be with you until the end of the age. And since it was spoken by Christ himself, it is steadfast and certain. And you can take it to the bank. Well, maybe you don't want to put it in the bank. Um, Maybe you should take it to your credit union. Um, maybe we should make that saying that instead of taking it to the bank, which no one has drive throughs at most of the branches. Oh, that's a personal issue, I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> so um, please remember who you are. Remember the one to whom you belong. Remember what it says about, don't worry about what you're gonna say when people start to confront you. You don't have to plan in advance because the Spirit will be with you to give you what you need to say. And I can attest to that from Sunday to Sunday to Sunday in every sermon. Amen.
maybe particularly for people on the eastern half of the country with all the smoke coming out of Canada uh, that's making their situation critical for people who are asthmatic or have other health conditions. Gracious Lord, we thank you for accompanying us in our life's journey. You have promised to always be with us. You have made it clear that you will never leave us alone, that you will always be there to uphold us and strengthen us. And even in those times when we aren't ready, you'll continue to work and be present in, with, and around us to help us move through the difficulties and troubles of this life. We give you thanks for loving us so much. We praise your holy name, for you have come from the creator of all things, and you are our Lord and Savior, who has come to save all of humankind. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious Lord, we offer a prayer of praise and, and celebration and thanksgiving for um, some new life opportunities that are opening up for Lisa Mendoza with regards to her skill at um, interpreting for the deaf community. Uh, we pray that you'll be with her and help her to make wise decisions and choices as this continues to unfold for her in her life. We, we pray that um, you'll be with her entire family because she has a busy family life too and that you'll help them to understand uh, that this is an opportunity that may only come once in a lifetime. And, and we pray that you'll be with her family to help them cope well with this. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious Lord, we pray for um, our nephew Mark, who is in care in his early 60s. He is a, an always recovering alcoholic who has suffered great, great physical harm due to his alcoholism. We pray for Melody's brother Terry as he continues to heal from eye surgery. And we pray for Candy Check, that she'll get into life in a way that is healthy and hope-filled for her, um, that she won't be dragged down by her emotional issues and her swings up and her swings down. Uh, we pray for our cousin Linda and her husband Keith in Georgia, that you'll be with them to continue to sustain them with your power and love, and to help them weather through this very difficult time in Keith's health. And we pray for Annette. Um, she had steroid shots in her knee and they did absolutely no good. Uh, and she's suffering still with a lot of pain. So we pray that you'll be with her and that you'll bring her to a place where she can find the kind of relief she needs from that pain that she has in her knees. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Gracious Lord, we pray for the people in that accident this morning up at the top of Ajo Way near Mount Zion Lutheran Church. We pray that you'll be with them to keep them safe. We pray that you'll help them to understand that their unwise choices were probably at fault for being in such a critical and severe accident. We pray for the police who came to that accident scene, that you keep them safe and mindful of the traffic still coming by on the way. And bless them all with your healing and loving presence. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious Lord, we pray for Annette's friend Hank, who is still recovering from surgery on his shoulder. And we pray for Annette's Aunt Kathy, too, that you'll be with her to rest your healing hands on her. Uh, in all the circumstances of life, we all need to know with comfort the presence that you give to us, the courage that you bring to us, the strength that you surround us with in all of these circumstances in which our lives are difficult uh, and challenged. We thank you for being with us in the mall. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy is Gracious Lord, we pray for Jim Blair's cousins, Jim and Janet, for continued healing. Um, and we pray for your speed for them on their trip back from uh, Illinois and Iowa. Be with them and keep them safe in the traveling. Uh, we pray for your presence 
uh, with Mark and Leanne, and that you'll open their hearts to your love, even in the midst of their sense of loss and grief. We pray for Pastor Ron and Becky, who've been having joyful reunions with family members uh, up in Minnesota. We pray that you'll also give them opportunity for adequate rest and recovery from their trip back up there. Uh, we pray for Candace, Lisa, and Alexis as well. Giving you thanks for Candace's continuing progress in her battle with cancer. And we pray that you will reach the point where that cancer is no longer present in your body. And we, we pray for the southeastern states, Lord, as they're suffering from severe weather, baseball-sized hail and tornadoes. And, and we pray for the people in the northeast and the middle of our country who have air qualities that are just really, really bad. Uh, places where the air is usually clean and clear. And we pray that you'll be with people to help them make good decisions about how to be in that atmosphere uh, when they have to be outside of their homes. We also pray for Jim for his eye, that he'll, the vision will be restored in some ways to that eye. We pray for Jim and his continuing and long battle with kidney stones. And, and we pray for him as he awaits getting his dental work all completed at the end of this month. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks for fathers. Our dads, help create us and bring us into the world just as, as you have. And we pray whether they were present in our growing up or not present that you'll be with those who are our fathers. Those who have been our adopted fathers and those who are our biological fathers. Keep them in your care. Help them to move forward in their lives wherever they are. And, and bring to them the sure and certain hope of the resurrection that makes this life tolerable and possible to be filled with joy and a sense of peace and comfort. Be with our dads. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. All these things we pray in the name of your Son and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Greet one another with the peace of the Lord. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please come to receive the sacrament of our Lord.